Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be bringing you a quick video on how to calculate the light gathering area of a telescope and compare it to another. This is actually really handy for beginners to do because a lot of times they want to know the difference between an 11 inch SCT and an 8 inch SCT and how much light that 11 inch gathers compared to the 8 inch. Now you'll find a couple calculators online that will do this, but what I found is none of them include the central obstruction area in their calculations. And the central obstruction can actually take up a significant amount of the light gathering area depending on the telescope design. So this Mead 8 inch Schmidt Newtonian does have that central obstruction as you can see and that needs to be negated out of the overall light gathering capabilities for an accurate number. So I was actually doing this on a whiteboard uh, comparing a couple different scopes and I thought you know what, this would be really easy to do in a spreadsheet. So it only took me about three minutes to set it up, get all my formulas where I wanted them, and I thought, you know, this could be really helpful for other people. And the thing is, in astronomy, you have to remember that aperture truly is king. I know there's a lot of astrophotographers that love their wide field setups, but in research and in visual use, aperture truly is king. There's a lot of stuff you can see with a 20 inch telescope that you can't observe with an 8 inch telescope. So by being able to compare telescope designs and see how much light one is bringing in compared to another actually is really valuable. So let's go ahead and switch over to the, uh, the computer here now. I'll show you how I uh, put my spreadsheet together. Now I think you'll be surprised at how quickly you can put this calculator together, but I'm just gonna spread these columns out, give myself a bit more room. And the first thing we're gonna do is set up the entire calculator first before we start plugging anything in. So we will call this light gathering area comparison calculator. And just to make this look nice, I will merge and center and make it bold. We'll call this column telescope number one, this column telescope number two, and then we'll have the primary diameter and the central obstruction diameter. Then we're going to need the primary radius and the central obstruction radius, total area, and then the percent light gathered of telescope number one to telescope number two. And again, I'm just going to merge and center that and bold it because that's what we're after here. So let's imagine that we want to compare a 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope to an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope and see how much more light that 14 inch is gonna pull in. So the primary diameter, you could put this in inches if you want to, that's not a problem as long as you keep the units the same throughout. But I actually prefer the metric system just every day. And for this purpose, I find it to be a little bit more precise. So we're gonna say this 14 inch telescope, rather than inches, we're gonna say it's 350 millimeters with a central obstruction diameter of 114 millimeters. And then telescope number two, we'll say is 203 millimeters with an 80 millimeter central obstruction. Now, the area of a circle is pi r squared, not d squared. So we don't, we, we can't be in diameter. We need to convert these to radius. And that's really easy to do. It's just the diameter divided by two. So the primary radius, we're just gonna say equals this divided by two. And then we can actually just take this little box here at the bottom right and drag it down. And that will do the same thing here. And then we can drag it over and it will do the same thing for the other column as well. So now we have the radius of our 14 inch primary and the radius of the central obstruction as well as the same for telescope number two. Now we can determine the total area because we have radius. So we're gonna say equals and then we're gonna take the radius and square that. And then it's gonna be multiplied by pi, so 3.14. Now, I'm gonna click out of this real quick and you'll see this number pop up. 
I'm actually going to put this in parentheses. And the reason why is we have to follow our order of operations here. And then we're going to subtract the area of the central obstruction from this. So we're going to put a parenthesis. We're going to take the central obstruction radius now and square that and multiply it by 3.14 and close the parentheses. Now we have the total area of this telescope. And that's actually taking into account the central obstruction. So a lot of those online calculators, like I said, they're just going to compare the primary diameter or the primary area comparing telescope one and two, and they're not going to take into account the area of the central obstruction. But we just did. So this is a more accurate number. And then there, again, the really nice thing is we can just take this and drag it over. And that's going to do the same thing over there. So now we have the total area for the uh, 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain and the total area for the, uh, the eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain. And this is in square millimeters. So to compare these two together now, all we do is we just say equals this area divided by that area multiplied by 100 because we want this to be a percent, right? Now we just hit enter. And now we can see that the 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain gathers 315% more light than the eight inch does. So three times more light, that's quite a bit. Now you don't really need to see all of these decimals. So I just like to right click here, format cells, hit number, and I just put zero decimal places. That'll round it. So 315% more light for the 14 inch than the eight inch. Now the fun thing you can do here is we can make a chart and say telescope models. We can say uh, uh, primary diameter and central obstruction diameter. And we can enter as many telescope models as we want here for future reference. So I could say, you know, Celestron C4, Maksutov, Cassegrain, C5, Schmidt, Cassegrain, C6, Schmidt, Cassegrain. But what if we wanted to compare that with you know, a refractor, we could say C6R. And the primary diameter is about 152 millimeters, but refractors don't have these central obstructions. So we would put zero right there. So let's actually do that. Let's compare the six inch refractor to the 14 inch telescope. So what we would do here is we would change this to 152 and the central obstruction diameter is zero. So in this case, 474% more light is gathered by the 14 inch than the six inch. That's almost five times more light. That is a ton. Uh, so you can actually have some fun with this and compare a bunch of different designs together to see what's best for you. Now, one thing I'll also do is bold this value. And that way it becomes apparent to the, uh, the person using the calculator that these are the only two or the only four values that you have to change. So we could keep going here. We could, you know, say C8, Schmidt Cassegrain, C9 and a quarter inch. Uh, we could even put, you know, like a Mead, uh, SN10, Schmidt Newtonian, 254 millimeter primary diameter and the uh, central obstruction diameter is 81. And we could compare that with the, a 14 inch or a different telescope there. Uh, we could put, you know, a red cap 51. <laughs> little 51 millimeter primary diameter with no central obstruction. Actually, that might be fun to compare to a 14. Let's try that. So 51, still no central obstruction. Oh yeah, the 14 inch gathers 4,210% more light. <laughs> so <laughs> the 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain gathers 42 times more light than the little two inch red cat does, <laughs> which is obvious. I mean, the areas are totally different. Now this calculator also has some economic value as well. Let's say a pizza company was running a promotion where you get two eight inch pizzas for the same price as a 14 inch pizza. So what you could do here is you could actually change this to pizzas and see which one is gonna give you more pizza because we all want more pizza, right? So we could say pizza number one and pizza number two here. And pizzas don't have central obstructions, right? So we could just change those both to zero. 
Now, we already have an 8 inch pizza here, and we wanted to compare that to a 14 inch pizza, so we'll change that to 350 millimeters. Actually, you know what? Let's just, let's just do this in inches. 14 inches and 8 inches. Okay, there we go. Now, our total area, uh, we get a lot more pizza out of the 14 inch than we do the 8 inch. Uh, in fact, we get 306% more pizza now. If you don't like looking at things in percents, you just want to see a simple ratio, what you could do is just click on this cell and erase the multiply by 100. And that's going to give you the, the ratio there. And if you want to see a few more decimals, you can right click, go to format cells and increase the decimals to two. And we can see that the 14 inch pizza gets 3.06 times more area than the uh, the 8 inch pizza does. Now we have two of these, right? So if you wanted to, you could actually come in here and change your formula and multiply that primary area by two. And now you still see the 14 inch still has one and a half times more pizza. So even if that company is giving you two pizzas, uh, you don't want to do that. You still want to get the one 14 inch. So I'm just going to change that back. So yeah, this calculator also could allow you to get more pizza and maybe save some money in the long run too. <laughs>